Coach Nick Hauselman, better known as Coach Nick from bballbreakdown.com, joins me courtesy of the Subway Fresh Take Hotline. Nick, we saw tonight that Danny Green and Gary Neal combined for 51 points, Green scoring 27, Neal scoring 24. They outscored the entire starting five from the Miami Heat. How did this happen to Miami in game three? Well, I got to tell you, Freddie, everyone's asking me, can the Spurs repeat that kind of shooting performance? And my answer is, absolutely, if they get those shots again, every one of those shots were completely uncontested and wide open. And so those guys are professional shooters. You give them that kind of space, they're going to do it all the time. And when the Spurs get that kind of ball movement and they cut down their turnovers, it's like shooting practice for them. I understand that, Nick, but 16 to 32, that's asking a lot for any team to shoot like that in back-to-back games in the NBA Finals. And, yeah, I hear what you're saying about shots were uncontested, but realistically, why should the Spurs not rely on that, especially the possibility of Tony Parker not being available in Game 4? But that is, I mean, you're, it's a great point. There is going to be regression to the mean, and certainly, you know, Popovich is probably hoping maybe they didn't have to make so many tonight to save some for the game four. So, you know, I would expect that the Heat are going to turn up their defense. They're going to close out better. They're going to get more deflections. They're going to disrupt. They'll probably take a hard foul or two because, you know, what we saw with uh, Denver playing the Warriors is that, you know, to get the shooter like that out of their rhythm, you've got to bump them a little bit and give them a little pressure. And I, I expect Pat Riley will come down and give him a little talk about it, and he certainly knows all about that. And so I will, I will suspect that, yes, you're not going to see another uh, shooting performance like that from three-point land. Coach Nick Hauselman. Coach Nick, I like to call him from bballbreakdown.com with Freddie Coleman on ESPN Radio. What would you do to get LeBron James better shots than we've seen in the first three games of this series? Well, Freddie, can you, can you hear me shaking my head? Because yes. <laughs> we, we are charting every one of the, of the Miami Heat offensive uh, half-court sets. And we're looking at what they're running. And every game, they come up with a new set that they put in that they hadn't run all series long or even in the series against Indiana. And so I don't blame LeBron or, or Wade or even more, more particularly the role players for being a little bit off rhythm because the shots aren't coming the same way every game and every possession. So they have certain plays that work very well. Uh, Horns, when they get uh, LeBron James on the high post, worked very well against Indiana. Here he settled for jump shots, and then he got into his head. So they need to get him away from the ball with screens curling out toward the basket so his teammates can help him get a rhythm. They don't do that very often, and they even tried doing the screen and roll, and it worked better in the first half when LeBron setting a screen. That needs to happen a lot more as well. Uh, so that the problem that the Heat have is the things that do work, they tend to go away from them for some strange reason, and it's, it, LeBron is in his head. I know LeBron has to get out of his own way. I clearly agree with you on that one, but why don't we see more team basketball from a team that when they play that way in Miami, things just seem to be so much better for them? Well, it's funny. You know, people made a big deal about their offense and how they do this five-out spread and like to kick it and pass and whatever. And that works great against most teams, but against a very good defense that has a day or two to prepare, all of a sudden the foundation isn't quite there. There isn't anything they're going to be able to do to suddenly start playing like the Spurs do on offense. So it's really going to be about LeBron making his own plays and and Dwayne Wade making his own plays individually. And that's very difficult against a team that is as seasoned as the Spurs. And it is too bad because the potential for the Heat, I think, is infinitely higher than than the Spurs. But the Spurs are playing team team offense so much better, and they have the foundation for it that they built over the last several years. The Heat are going to have a hard time competing with that. Miami is 5-0 and with an average margin of victory of 21.6 points following a loss in the postseason. What do you expect from Game 4 between the Spurs and Miami on Thursday night? Well, I can tell you that I hope that the Heat win because I want seven games. I want more of this. This is exciting stuff. Um, I would expect a tough game. I expect it to be physical. The referees are probably – first of all, the fact that they haven't really come up at all is amazing to me it's based on what we've seen the last couple of years with refereeing in the, in the uh, playoffs. So I expect it to be a rough game uh, and, and uneven, and they're going to have to grit it out. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Heat can somehow pull this thing out at the end and keep it close. It, I don't, it won't be another blowout. There's not going to be three blowouts in a row in the finals. So you're expecting the Miami Heat to win game four, my friend? I expect them to win it. I, I, I would be completely shocked if they come out and are, and are shell-shocked from this game. I think they're going to come back, and I think that they're going to be able to eke it out. 
Coach Nick, it's a pleasure as always, my friend. We'll do it again soon, okay? All right, man. I appreciate it, Freddie. 